Hello everyone. This was my birthday week. So normally I am not a believer of big celebrations. We have very small celebrations. So apart from that, I wanted to share a small interesting. I didn't vlog during my birthday, but you normally exchange some cakes or sweets in the office. That is the uh, normal Dutch culture. And apart from that, I wanted to say something like. I mean, you might have seen in different social medias, you are always greeted with different kind of, apart from the normal birthday greetings, like suppose, for example, in Twitter, by the way, follow me in Twitter and Instagram if you have not followed me yet. So I share a lot of stories and tips for upcoming PhDs and also about research and other kind of things. This week and the birthday, I found that normally what they do is that they try to in twitter especially when you open the home page then they will shower you with some balloons going through the screen it looks very nice at there is a certain boundary line for these kind of things at some point you will feel like okay it's that it's not it's it's bizarre like it's not that interesting after a certain point of time so it depends on what's your tolerance level to these kind of fancy stuff and apart from that one thing i like is that different supermarkets if you have fed them the data that your birthday is on that particular day which was in my case i had filled it there then they would ask uh, they send you like via email some discount coupons from some uh, shopping malls or something like that so you can use them like suppose you buy for 20 euros you will get a 5 or 10 euro discount and you have these balloons floating you can see on the screen so you have these offers and then you also have the like a voucher which you can redeem in different shops web shops or maybe sometimes they also sell some birthday products like maybe cake or something which you can use to greet your friends or make something in discounted prices. So you can buy sweets and other kind of stuff from the supermarkets in discounted prices. And apart from that, if you had seen my last week's PhD vlog, then I was uh, do, going on with the major revision and I was expecting, uh, I mean, I've submitted prior to last week, but I was just expecting when will they reply but till now there is no reply so till now there is no reply so that's why I wanted to say like patience is the key you will have these kind of moments uh, maybe in my experience you might see that I get a reply very fast but sometimes the reply is really really not that fast sometimes it might take also a year so you learn patience at different instances during your PhD. Apart from the journal submissions, sometimes uh, when you ask someone to review something, like suppose for example, when you are ending your PhD, what happens in Netherlands, you have to form a committee and then you need to ask them to give their feedback. And if all the committee members unanimously agree to uh, accept it, then it is uh, it gets a validation that you can go to the next step of printing your thesis and inviting everyone and deciding uh, the timing and everything, finalizing everything. So you are sure that on the day of the defense, unless something goes really terrible, that you will be getting a PhD, a doctorate. So that is one instance of getting patience and apart from that sometimes when you are writing grant proposals some i mean normally in phds you never write a grant proposal unless you have a nice proposal to start with and a team and some people pushing you and sometimes people ending their phds write grant proposals because of they want to extend their research so or maybe stay in that country uh, so to get a postdoc or there are many other reasons so Apart from this proposal writing, thesis writing, so this is all related to writing. Sometimes when you are doing experiments also, you expect a certain level of results, but you don't get it. So in that sense also, you have, the, you have to learn the patience. So sometimes you do a experiment, uh, trial one, and then you see this and uh, okay, I don't think that this matches my expectations then you go ahead with something else you tweak 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 so you need to 
continue this process till you achieve your desired level of accuracy or desired level of results and that is not always easy uh, as I have seen till now with my very brief experience of almost two years PhD it's not exactly two years it's going to be two years by the end of August so I hope you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the thumbs up button if you like this video and share among your friends keep following me and Instagram and Twitter and check my weekly PhD vlogs there is a playlist and other playlist about studying and living in Netherlands till next time Peace off from Valkenburg, Netherlands.